So in the last video I showed you my totally useless Sony watch cam from the 1980s. Well, here's something else that is just as useless that Panasonic made just to show you that Sony weren't in the league all by themselves. This is the world's first liquid crystal display color television that used TFT technology. Now I, I know Casio had some little crappy you know, pneumatic twists or whatever they call them, the super twist displays which had a really crappy picture. This is actually the first of the LCDs that had a respectable picture. It doesn't anymore because the LCD panel is pooched. I mean it's all blotchy and it just looks like hell. But at one point this actually had a relatively respectable picture. And Panasonic, in their wisdom, they, they knew that if someone was going to be using something like this outside, that, well, there'd be a problem trying to see it in the sun. So they actually made the display, you could tilt the display forward. Now it would turn off the backlight, and you could use the sun to reflect off this screen and give you light. Now, I don't have the sun here, but I do have one hell of a bright LED flashlight, which... Uh, actually is an improvement to the uh, to the liquid or to the fluorescent display you know if I had enough if I had enough initiative to do it I would rip this thing apart take that fluorescent tube out and string some LEDs in the back there and this thing could actually actually almost be useful uh, the picture's not bad when I actually put some proper light on it but anyway um, this was a three inch liquid crystal display analog TV and look at that it still works now you're probably wondering how the heck are you picking up an analog signal with an antenna because gee I thought the uh, I thought the FCC uh, blocked all programming well you're right they did everything's gone digital and uh, in the other room I've got one of those old Curtis video senders uh, plugged into my uh, plugged into my uh, cable box so that's where that signal is coming from and uh, it's not a very good signal at that but it's a little bit on the weak side but anyway I just wanted to show you this thing this is another unique piece of gear and uh, that has seen better days but uh, just shows you that uh, you know they were uh, certainly experimenting with this technology uh, back in the 80s now how I came about this monitor here um, it's a long story, but uh, a customer came into the store, and they had to have this thing. It was it was expensive. It was you know 400 bucks or so at the time. They had to have this thing uh, to use as a monitor for their camera. The the person was a a cinematographer that did underwater photography, and 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 the lady uh, she actually worked on several films like uh, Police Academy and stuff. If you remember Police Academy, um, and uh, she was a, a, a cinematographer on films like that, did a bunch of feature films, started her own company doing underwater uh, photography, and they wanted a small monitor to put into their underwater housing so that they would have a viewfinder from their film camera that they were filming with. I think all the film cameras had a video output, and they were looking for a, a small monitor that could be battery powered, and this was ordered in. And once the thing arrived, there's a small problem with it. And that problem was the color. It was red. Once this thing arrived in the store, it was red. And there was no way in hell that she was going to have a red monitor. She wanted a black monitor. Now, talk about the bitch of the, of the century her and her business partner screen bloody murder there was no way that they were going to take this thing after it was brought in they wanted a black one thing is they'd already opened the thing up the package was already open it had some scratches and stuff on it and uh, the shop took it back I think charged them a premium for the black one and uh, it was left sitting on display uh, never selling and uh, I think I, I scooped it when uh, the boss got tired of looking at the thing and he just said you know I don't know, 
here, I'll give you this thing instead of instead of paying you for some overtime, you worked a little harder. Uh, here, you can have this for the extra work, the extra hours you put in, rather than paying you out. And I was dumb enough to take it. But uh, anyway, uh, I've had it for years and years and years, and uh, I, I used it. I used to use a thing. Uh, I used to uh, take it to games. That's what I would take it when I went to like a football game or something that was being televised. Uh, the problem was it was so bloody bright in the stadium you couldn't see the thing anyway, uh, or the reception was so bad that it really didn't work. So uh, you know, but I mean, it got a little bit of use. But anyway, that's uh, that's a look at this Panasonic liquid crystal display, uh, three inch TV. It had all your standard VHF and UHF channels. It can still function as a monitor, I guess. It does have. An external uh, input on it uh, somewhere in here it has an external input oh it's on the other side I believe yeah but it's a special plug it's not a standard size of course it's a special plug um, and it has a radio in it too you know it had an AM FM stereo radio if you plugged headphones in it actually had FM stereo uh, it would run on about six batteries and you know chew up a, a set of AA batteries in no time but uh, anyway, there it is, um, another little piece of uh, equipment that you're probably never going to see ever again. And uh, well, now you've seen what started the LCD television revolution. This was it. This was the first TFT LCD screen. Before they were on any cameras or anything, this is where it started out, was on this one. And everything up to this point was the little Casios, that you know, the little 2-inch and two and a half inch Casios that just looked like ah rubbish this one had a good picture to start things off this started the whole revolution so that big uh, that big 50 or 60 or 80 inch LCD TV that you're watching now okay they call them an LED but they're still a liquid crystal display but they're using the technology that was pioneered right here on this little three inch uh, TV